On this episode of Hidden Happy Valley, we're going to explore the Rattlesnake Pike between Phillipsburg and Belfont. We're going to look for all the mile markers, talk about some of the local trails, take a sip from a natural spring, and maybe even find the remnants of the Rattlesnake Hotel. To start our episode, we traveled to Phillipsburg, also known as the Wilderness City. Phillipsburg is home to many local attractions like the Roland Theater, Simler House, and the Old Mud Church, which you can learn more about in our Hidden Happy Valley playlist. Our adventure begins here, right in the heart of Phillipsburg, where we find our first mile marker. 33 minutes, 149 miles. 148 miles on that. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So that's where Meadville, Kerwinsville. Kerwinsville. Meadville's 122 miles that way. And then on past that, Presque Isle, Erie. We are on Presque Isle Street. If you look at Presque Isle Street. So a turnpike is just an improved road that you have to pay to use. And if you pay the toll, they'll lift the old pike. The Rattlesnake Pike, which is part of the greater Philadelphia to Erie Turnpike, was cut 60 feet wide, 20 feet of which was paved with clay. All streams were bridged and the road was reportedly so smooth that the most petulant fault-finding cynic could sleep in his carriage as he rolled at a rate of about six miles an hour. Along the pike in Rush Township is Butler Cemetery. Resting peacefully among others is Daniel Butler, a resident of Phillipsburg who served during the Civil War as a private and company C of the 47th Regiment, New York Volunteer Infantry. The Philadelphia to Erie Turnpike, known locally as the Rattlesnake Pike, arose among early American efforts to expand westward to more efficiently access remote resources. Along the way, mile markers were erected to help travelers keep track of the distance between Phillipsburg and Belfont. Let's see if we can find some of these mile markers during our adventure. These mile markers along 504 Rattlesnake Pike all say 2B and then the mileage. That one's hard to read. And then 2P as in Phillipsburg, five miles. B that looks like 22. five is 28 because that said 28 back in Yeah, so there you go. So 20. We can do math. Yeah, 23 miles. Google Maps says 23 miles. We just drove from Phillipsburg, five miles. And we don't need Google Maps because we got the mile marker to Belfont, 23 miles. These have all been preserved by the Machannon chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution. That's a long way, that would take like two days. Well, good thing the Rattlesnake Hotel's up ahead. Yeah. But there, this was the old state road. So maybe yeah. that's an older, this is yeah. older than So the road is probably older than 18. Yeah, 21. Because they did say they used to, they, they needed to get out to Erie, especially for during the War of 1812, to get supplies out to Commodore Perry. Sweet. This marker is also bringing in the impact of the Pennsylvania Canal. How when it reached Lock Haven and was extended to uh, the, through the Bald Eagle Valley to Belfont, how it changed uh, changed life, uh, changed the way iron was shipped. Instead of by mule, it's going to be sent by canal, which is going to be much more efficient. 1828, blooms were made from big iron, carried from Bald Eagle Valley by mule. So they carried them from Bald Eagle Valley. So it's probably made of like Curtin Village or Eagle Ironworks. Go check out the Hidden Happy Valley episode on Eagle Ironworks in Curtin Village for more information. How many miles away are we? I don't know, it seems like this mile marker is broken. We're lost. What do we do? 2 Phillipsburg, 11 miles. So 11 miles that way. Let's see if we can find some more. Heading to Belfont. This is the last one that we've come across today. This one says 2 Belfont, 12 miles, 2 Phillipsburg, 16 miles. Again, 28 miles between 
two places. If you happen to come across one that we haven't found yet, please let us know. Next, we make our way to the natural spring along this road, which served and still does as a great way to fill up canteens for long days of travel in the past. When horse travel was the main means of transportation between towns, places like the Rattlesnake Hotel were crucial to water your horses, to rest, to replenish your food, and maybe even sample the finest whiskey bitters. On the Philadelphia Erie Turnpike near Rush Township line, it was located approximately 100 yards up the road from this water pipe. Close by, we even took the chance to search for remnants of the old Rattlesnake Hotel. I wonder what we'll find. But yeah, like this is got it. This is the corner of it, yeah, 100%. It's not natural. It's huge and it has an outhouse and it has yeah, a well and it stable. has stables. Yeah. So, Really, realistically, all these rocks that we're, we're finding in, in some sort of pattern that are not supernatural looking um, probably were part of it. So Dustin and I made it, and we believe we found the rattlesnake. Oh, yeah. It's a railroad spike. Kind of. It almost looks like a horseshoe. A yeah, no, it is. It's a broken horseshoe. We're pretty sure this is it. Uh, you have a nice corner. Uh, I've heard locals talk about the foundation is still here, right off the road, right off, right off of Rattlesnake Pike, and uh, this could very well be the the famous Rattlesnake Hotel foundations. So that makes us the most recent patrons of the Rattlesnake Tavern. I could use a refreshment. To join Local Historia on their next tour, go to localhistoria.com. The Allegheny Front is a series of mountains that divides two regions of Pennsylvania. Uh, toward Belfont, toward the east are the Ridge and Valleys. And once you get into Phillipsburg and that direction into Western PA, it becomes the Allegheny Plateau. So in between that is the Allegheny Front. And Native Americans have been using trails across this barrier uh, for centuries. Uh, people like the Seneca uh, weave trails through here and there's other Native American paths. And modern people use those paths to make trails like the Allegheny Front. It's a 42 mile loop. So let's hike it. Let's go. In the 1800s, during the logging boom, central Pennsylvania loggers like John Ardell Jr. of Belfont would purchase vast acres of forest and tear it all down. So everything you see here is all newer growth than the 1800s. By the late 1800s, it becomes so bad in this area, so barren, that Dr. Joseph Rothrock will refer to this as a Pennsylvania desert. That's right. And thankfully, the Civilian Conservation Corps, the CCC, that was one of President Roosevelt's New Deal programs, rescued these forests and these resources, state parks all across Pennsylvania and across the nation. Thanks, President Roosevelt. Lumber would be used in ironworks, it would be used in mills, it would be used to build towns. And so that resource was claimed throughout this entire area. 42 miles. Goodness. Heck of a loop. These are solid. I know a lot of locals were involved in uh, building these trails uh, for many years, for decades. Uh, people from the county and beyond. Um, it connects to a few other major uh, trails, a couple other Native American paths like the Great Shemokin Path and the Bald Eagle Path. Um, so a pretty major system of, of trails a long time ago and today. Happy Valley is full of history that is all around you. All it takes is a little wonder and a little exploration to see it yourself. So go out and explore. Just remember, adventure awaits you in Happy Valley.